Robert Reich is a mental midget. May I say that, mental midget? I think I will, because I just did, because that's what he is. He's a hardcore lefty. Uh, he's one of these guys who really wants to destroy the nation from within. Now, he would say, no, I don't, I don't. Do these guys ever propose anything that actually supports freedom and limited government and capitalism and family and faith? Never. So that's what I mean. Inequality media, something he runs or he works for, they're very concerned about a case going to the Supreme Court, which is a very important case. I'll let him explain it, then I'll respond to him. It's the North Carolina case. It involves Article Two of the Constitution. And this article of the Constitution provides that the state legislatures shall make decisions about these, these elections and the appointment of electors. We've talked about that at great length on Levin TV and elsewhere. And this has been violated routinely by Democrats, Democrat governors, Democrat secretaries of state, Democrat boards of elections, Democrat mayors, Democrat lawyers and funders, and uh, Democrat courts. And I've been arguing now for the longest time that this needs to be fixed and only the Supreme Court can fix it because it's right there in the Constitution and it should have taken up a case in Pennsylvania that was right on point. And the great Justice Samuel Alito, who is a superstar, he apparently wanted to take up the case. Gorsuch and Thomas wanted to take it up too, is my understanding from the news, but it takes four. And we couldn't get Barrett and we couldn't get Kavanaugh. And of course, Hollywood John Roberts, he's not interested. So what's this all about? What is this all about? It's about the Democrat Party trying to change election rules and laws prior to elections. And this is one of the things that happened in 2020 in a plot, a strategic attack on our electoral system, particularly in battleground states. This is one of the things that has so frustrated President Trump and the Republicans. Not the rhinos, the real true blue conservative Republicans. And so this case out of North Carolina is headed to the Supreme Court, and this appears to be the issue that needs to be addressed. And so he's very upset about it, is Robert Reich. This Supreme Court case could determine who wins future elections. Go. Republicans have a scheme that could remove American voters from the process of selecting their next president. You heard that right. A case headed to the Supreme Court could let Republican-controlled state legislatures overrule the will of the people and pick the next president of the United States without you. This all hinges on a radical idea called the independent state legislature. Now stop. The independent state legislature theory? Stop right there. It's called Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2. Each state shall appoint at such manner as the legislature thereof may direct a number of electors equal to the whole number of senators and representatives to which the state shall be entitled in the Congress. Each state shall appoint in such manner as the legislature thereof may direct. Now early in our history, that's exactly what did happen. Some states in their legislatures did appoint electors for president and vice president of the United States. Some states, most of them, had elections that would determine the electors, and of course today we have elections that determine the electors. But the states have the final say. They have the power in the end, and they can override what the people do, but they wouldn't. Uh, that would be political suicide. But what's really upsetting Robert Reich and his ilk is what took place in the 2020 election. That is, you had Mark Elias and a band of slip and fall ambulance chasing political hack lawyers going into various states, going in front of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court as a perfect example, five to two elected Democrats on that court who changed the election rules. All of a sudden signatures weren't required and a whole bunch of other modifications that the legislature never voted on. It happened in Milwaukee, it happened in other states as well, in other cities as well, uh, Wisconsin. And um, they want it to stay that way so they can fix the system. I don't mean reform it, I mean fix it for the outcome for the Democrats. And so the Supreme Court's gonna take a look at this. So it's no independent legislature theory. I just read to you what the Constitution says. Now, if you wanna understand the Constitution, 
one of the last people you go to is him. Go. It's at the heart of a case the Supreme Court will decide called Moore versus Harper. The decision in this case could give state legislatures the power to disregard the popular vote and substitute their own slate of electors. And they always had that power. But that's not what goes on in modern times. I will give you another example. In 2000, uh, when the Supreme Court of Florida, all Democrats, kept changing the election rules for counting these chads, these ballots. Uh, finally, the U.S. Supreme Court stepped in and said enough is enough. And by a vote of seven to two, stopped the state Supreme Court that kept changing their laws, the election laws in Florida. Now, where was the jurisdiction for the Supreme Court? It's in the federal constitution. Who has the authority? The state legislature. And most people don't remember the Florida state legislature was calling a session to choose the electors because the Supreme Court of Florida was choosing the electors by its erroneous, phony rulings. So the court doesn't have the power to do that in Florida. The state legislature does. Specifically, the framers of the Constitution left it to the state legislatures. Go. To whomever they wish. We've already had a preview of what this could mean for our democracy. The independent state legislature theory underpinned a major legal strategy in Trump's attempted coup. Just look at one thing. The legislatures of the states did not approve all of the things now that that's were... March 31, 2021. That's not January 6th. That's many months after January 6th. Many months. So this is really, really outrageous editing. And what I'm telling you is, folks, Trump is exactly right about this. And I guess a lot of people have heard me talk about it on the radio and TV. And as I say, the Supreme Court should have taken up that case the way it took up the Florida case in 2000 and put an end to what the state Supreme Court in Florida was doing. It should have put an end to what the Pennsylvania Supreme Court was doing. But unfortunately, the Chief Justice is Roberts and not Rehnquist. Go. Done for those elections. And under the Constitution of the United States, they have to do that. Trump was wrong, of course, but the current Supreme Now, Trump was right, of course. Go. Could make him right. Here's background on the case. In February 2022, the North Carolina Supreme Court blocked the state's Republican-controlled General Assembly from instituting a newly drawn congressional district map holding that the map violated the state constitutional ban on partisan gerrymandering. The Republican Speaker of the North Carolina House appealed the decision to the U.S. Supreme Court, advancing this theory, a theory that's circulated for years in right-wing circles, which argues that the U.S. Constitution... You see, you see how this works? The theory that has circulated for years in right-wing circles. I read to you the language in the Constitution. The Democrats and these Marxists, they break away from the Constitution. And they're getting used to it. So they're unmoored. The further we're unmoored from the Constitution, the more they win. Because their agenda is not constitutionally based, whether it's the economy or anything else. And so they've gotten away with going to these Democrat Supreme Courts. They've gotten away with going to these Democrat governors when the legislatures are Republican. You'll notice the Republicans don't challenge the Democrat legislatures. Where's the case for the Republicans challenging the Democrat legislatures under Article 2? There aren't any. But the Democrats want to read Article 2 out of the Constitution. Go ahead. Give state legislatures alone the power to regulate federal elections in their states. So why did the framers of the Constitution say the state legislatures? They didn't say the state. They didn't say the governor. They didn't say the courts of the state. They didn't talk about judicial review. They said the final say, the first say and the final say is with the state legislatures. That's some right wing theory. It's right here. Go. The Constitution does grant state legislatures the authority to prescribe the times, places and manner of holding elections. But the U.S. Constitution does not give state legislatures total power over our democracy. And Each state shall appoint in such manner as the legislature thereof may direct. It doesn't just say place and time of voting, does it? Does it, Mr. Producer? 
each state shall appoint, comma, in such manner as the legislature thereof may direct, comma, a number of electors equal to the whole number of senators and representatives to which the state may be entitled in Congress, in Congress for the purpose of choosing a president. You see, the electors choose the president. The legislatures are in charge of setting up the system by which the electors are chosen. Not a judge, not a governor because they felt then that the state legislatures were closest to the people. They didn't believe in direct democracy. They saw what was going on in the French Revolution. They didn't want a mobocracy, and they didn't want a monarchy. They wanted a representative republic, and the people most representative of the people in the state are the people closest to them in terms of the state representation, the legislature. That's what they did. Now, how do we know they did that? Because they told us. And what was the outcome? What I read to you. Notice, so far, because I haven't watched this, he has skipped it. So far. Maybe he'll eventually get to it. Go ahead. Last century, the Supreme Court has repeatedly rejected the independent state legislature theory. Yet if we know anything about the conservative majority that now controls the Supreme so Court... Now, you got to attack the justices who uphold the Constitution. Because he knows four justices voted to take up the case. Now, why did they vote to take up the case? To resolve this issue. The way the 2000 court resolved it in Florida. They are scared to death of Republican legislatures, or any legislatures, for purely crass political reasons. Because the Republicans tend to win these votes to control many of the legislatures. And they don't want the Republicans making decisions about electors. They'll scare the hell out of say The legislatures will pick the electors and they don't have to follow the vote. Uh, when did that happen in the last hundred years? Nowhere, nowhere. What's happening that's different now is we have courts making these decisions. Whereas they used to stay out of it now they're all involved in it because that's what Democrats do. They destroy institutions. Go. That they will rule on just about anything that suits the far right's agenda. The theory would also make it easier for states to pull all sorts of election trickery, like pass even more extreme voter suppression laws, enact even more radically gerrymandered maps, and eliminate- The most radical gerrymandered map of this last election cycle cycle was, uh, was drawn up by the Democrat legislature in New York. It was so bad, a Democrat appellate court shot it down. And that court said, we don't have time to go back and have the legislature redo this, given the primaries that are coming up. So they just shot it down. That's how bad the Democrats are. It's not just Republicans who gerrymander. And gerrymandering's been going on since the beginning of our republic. All of a sudden, it's a right-wing thing. They want to control everything, the bureaucracy and so forth. And so they want to set up bureaucratic means by which legislatures are determined why. Then they'll have their equity agenda, their diversity agenda, an entire agenda that's intended for the Democrat Party base to destroy any chance of having competitive elections. They've already tried this by nationalizing the voting system, which the Constitution leaves to the states. Go ahead. Power of election commissions and secretaries of state to make decisions altogether. It's bad enough without the full protections of the Voting Rights Act. The last thing we need is for voter suppression to be made even easier for... Ex it's the Democrats who support voter suppression. And it's about time Republicans learn how to speak. What do I mean by that? If you have no real standards for voting, and in their proposed national voting bill, you can vote in any precinct in the state, you don't have to show voter ID, they will not clean the voter rolls of double uh, enrollments, triple enrollments, deaths, or anything of the kind. Uh, they take away um, voter ID. 
and on and on and on. So if you have people voting more than once, if you have people voting for dead people, if you have illegal aliens voting, uh, if you are taking away the protections that exist in any system that's going to function, uh, and then you claim that that is uh, expanding voting for minorities or expanding voting period, and anybody who opposes you is for voter suppression. It is they who support voter suppression because every illegal vote is a vote that cancels your vote. These people are tyrannical. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.